It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your Grunkle Scott is? to another jam-packed action edition of David Lee Madison's The End of the Night. I, of course, am the quack who runs this mess of a show, David Lee Madison, and right here is the quack producer, grand Pooba, dear friend, co-host, bearded guy, guy I love, Mr. Joe Ridgely. Joe, how are you, my friend? I am well. Do I get a raise for all those titles? Yes, you get a raise. <laughs> now, not only do we pay you one banana, we pay you two bananas. <laughs> How the hell are you, Joe? I am great, but I am saddened, David. Why are you saddened? B- because it, it, after this show, we're, we're on a three-week hiatus. Oh, okay. So Thanks that, for telling me. That makes me sad. <laughs> awesome. I guess we could all, you know, after doing literally 9,256,083 shows, we could take a couple weeks off. Fair enough. Hi, Sean. How are you? How is everything in uh, Smith, Smith, Smithson Creations Handcrafted Woodwork? That's a, that's a hard shit to say right there. <laughs> I've got a lot of his pieces at my house. I They're know. He's an amazing. Phenomenal. He is an amazing artist and just a great guy. Sean, uh, how are you doing? You know, I'm super excited to have uh, uh, actor Gregory Blair on our show tonight. Uh, I just met Gregory in the green room uh, before the show. He's uh, extraordinarily funny, and uh, I'm excited to uh, have him on the show. He's a great actor, too, so that'll be uh, fun. Ah, J.W., how are you, my friend? Uh, I think you went, I think I saw on your, I'm drooling on myself. I guess I shouldn't eat a cookie right before the show starts. (laughs) I saw you went to go see Indiana Jones. Was it the new Indiana Jones? Hi, Michael. How are you? I hope you're in uh, loving Florida. Uh, Is it the new Indiana Jones that he see or did he see the... uh... I can actually answer that for him because tomorrow night on the Indie Escape Network presents Generation Movies, they are going to be discussing Raiders of the Lost Ark which is actually back in the theaters again. Oh, sweet. They're trying to pump up that crap that they are putting out this year. So they're putting out the old Raiders so people could see what a a good movie looks like. (laughs) No, wait a minute. You you, you said it with a straight face. Oh, no. I seen the new Raiders. I I know. I literally, uh, I'm sad. It was uh, was dreadful. Uh, But uh, with that being said, the original Raiders was fantastic. And uh, the second one was, eh, it was shitty. But the third one, with Sean Connery as his dad. Was that the Last Crusade, if I remember correctly? Last Crusade, yeah, the Holy Grail. That was, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the very best Indiana Jones. That's what a lot of people are saying. When is the Raiders coming out in theater? I think it comes out uh, in uh, the end of this month, isn't it? <clears throat> Actually, they're timing. Uh, JW and uh, Rich are timing it so they can review Raiders, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, Crystal Skulls, and then the new movie. So it's four Let me ask you something. What is more dreadful, Crystal Skulls or the second one? Definitely Crystal Skulls. Okay. I I mean, just like everybody else, freaking the CG monkeys and everything, it was silly. And it doesn't fit an Indiana Jones movie. And the guy literally is like a hundred yards away from a nuclear explosion and survives because he's in a refrigerator. <laughs> Temple of Doom, Doom thumbs, thumbs down. down. That's the second one, right? Where the guy, 
I like that one scene where he like the guy puts his hand in the guy's chest and, and rips out, out his heart. Baby. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, but Molaram. I, I hope that when I'm eighty something years old, like Harrison Ford is, that I'm like just being alive would be a bonus. I'd be happy with just that. Uh, and the CGI ants. <laughs> oh, that was in. Uh, that's the one you're talking about, right? The, the crystal, crystal skulls. skulls. Yeah. yeah, you know, at that time, I think the goal was to hand over the mantle of the Indiana Jones stories to Shia LaBeouf of all people. Or it, uh, so. uh, well, originally you're supposed to go to River Phoenix. Yes, but, uh, well, no, I think River Phoenix played young Indiana Jones. Right, but I thought that was supposed to continue after oh, to make Harrison like young, Ford. Didn't they make a young Indiana Jones TV show, but with a different they guy? They did. It flopped bad. I don't remember what that guy's name was. I'm sure that uh, John Wayne uh, will... Uh, Screaming at me any minute. The guy who played the young Indiana Jones in the TV show. I have no idea. You know what's funny? I got to see for the first time uh, the last Thor movie. And that... that was that Why? a giant bug that just flew by? Yes, there's a... Freaking... There's like a fucking pterodactyl in your house, dude. <laughs> no. Oh my God. That's why I in the house. It's that's why I big. live in Florida, dude. That thing, like... Oh, dude, they're put all over the place. It's not just Florida. Put a, put a fucking harness on that thing and take it for a ride. <laughs> now, you know what's so funny? Remember, like, the 615 mark and watch this back, and literally there is a sighting of a giant monster flying by your lens. And, 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 and he's, like, green and snarling and horrifying. Uh, <laughs> Temple of the Doom is underrated, gets a lot of grief, but... Oh, Sean Patrick Flannery. Flannery. That's right. Oh, Drew Gaderis, one of my very favorite actors, are joining us tonight. Drew, I hope you are well, and uh, you're awesome. Uh, it's not only in Florida, so right, Joe. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in Pennsylvania, dude, flying around. Well, it's just because I have a good camera that caught uh, okay. it. So you're saying he's literally like the size of a gnat, and you just have like this amazing IMAX camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming back, the little bastards. Ah, <laughs> uh, so... Uh, how was your Memorial Day? You do anything exciting? Worked, worked, worked. I it's had fun. A, <laughs> I had a big ass barbecue on the I Sunday. I saw. Uh, it's funny because my party is usually only about I don't know, uh, maybe twenty five to thirty people. This one, like sixty people showed up too. Wow. And one of my dearest friends from my childhood, somebody who grew up, I grew up at sixty four oh four seventy seventh Street in Middle Village, Queens. My pal Darren. Grew up at 6410, which means there was only two houses between us. And we uh, literally, uh, we got arrested together. Uh, we did all kinds of really horrible and nasty shit together growing up, and it was fantastic. And I got to see him uh, when we, uh, we were friends, really close friends, up until around age 30. And then he had two children. I had a child. I moved to Pennsylvania. He, you know, continued his life of crime in Queens. And we kind of separated uh, for like the last 20 years, which that's all you folks out there know that I'm in my 50s now. It's hard to believe seeing that you know, I'm so fucking studly. But I said that with a straight face too, Joe. But it well, was, I was still thinking about, you know, last week and there's, there's something about Mary hair. And at oh, least that got tamed a little. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually wore, I don't know if you, I put up a picture of me earlier yeah, you wore a hat. At, at the lake today. Yes. So I wanted to tame my something about Mary hair from the show. <laughs> So I put a baseball. I had a baseball cap on all day to keep it nice and flat instead of going poof. But you know, at least at this advanced stage that I'm at, I can happily report that I still have hair. So that's that's a bonus. But uh, it was wonderful. We had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend barbecue on Sunday. Uh, a lot of friends came out. Uh, congratulations to you, Jones. Oh, but uh, thank you. It's very kind. Yeah, she uh, continues uh, uh, going into her senior year this September. With a perfect 4.0, and has won every prestigious uh, academic award that the state of Massachusetts uh, gives out. And what's really cool is that she continuously beats people from Harvard at Yale at these academic uh, competitions. <laughs> so uh, that's just uh, that's that's wonderful. <laughs> Those schmucks. Uh, well, with that being said, uh, we had a show last week, right? Yeah. No, no, last week. No, no, last week was uh, Memorial Day. Oh, uh, Memorial. I'm sorry, yeah. the week prior. Yes. Yeah, we 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 had a Grunkle Scotch sighting at our last show, and uh, we are not only thrilled and blessed 
to have Grunkle Scott, of course, as our three, our, uh, one of our three amigos here. But Grunkle Scott is going to grace us with his venerable presence for two episodes in a row. And uh, I, I don't know how to react to that. I mean, I, well, well, he heard there was a three week break after this, so he kind oh. of felt obligated. <laughs> <laughs> So, without further ado, let's bring up uh, uh, our uh, our champion of justice, our beloved Grunkle Scott Schiaffo. Grunkle <laughs> Scott, how are you, my friend? Hey, 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 what an intro. Wow. What's going on, guys? That's why I get paid three bananas. Three bananas. Cause I, <laughs> nice. Because I come up with those great intros. So, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, Ken. Um... I'm good. There's no complaints. I'm, uh, Jewel made amazing meatballs tonight, but they're, 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 kind of, they're giving me a hard time now. Oh, okay. So you might be, you might be bailing at any moment. <clears throat> they're coming back. You're coming back with of... Avengers. I feel like that's like I swallowed battery acid. He's got the well, agita. Oh, Come so on. it's the sauce. It's the sauce. It's not. The well, yeah, yeah. You know what's happening is I'm just like all other ailments, man. I'm just getting old. Have you so, guys ever had meatballs that have ricotta in the middle of them? Well, n no, I've had one, them with uh, mozzarella in the middle. But, mm -hmm. Scott, I wanted to ask you about something because my grandfather um, was actually from Italy. And they they did this weird things with meatballs. I don't want, Have you ever heard of putting raisins in meatballs? Wow. No, I haven't. Okay. Um, <laughs> But there's no telling. I mean, you know, I think one thing about Italian cuisine, the, I think the North and the South, the Napolitans and the Sicilians, is very different worlds with and the food, the but I, I don't know. Sicilian, yes. So. Yeah, see, we're in Napolitan, and, uh, you know, that's like that age old, is it gravy or is it sauce? Right. It's ragu either way. <laughs> it's sauce. <laughs> JW says you need to put a little sugar in that sauce, sir. You know what? To cut the I'm, acidity, I'm, yeah, that's a. I'm with JW on this because I there was a place called Sal's Pizza in where I grew up, and his his sauce always tasted a little sweeter than the other guy's sauces, and it just was so much better. But I wasn't sure. You know, I don't think it's actually putting sugar into it. I think it's the type of tomatoes. There are actually sweet tomatoes that you could use to make sauces and stuff better. Yeah, you know, it's her meatballs and her sauce are top notch. As uh, honestly, it's not just saying that, but uh, I it's 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 me. I'm the problem, not the meatball, not the sauce. Right. I'm the problem always. <laughs> and that's why we pray. That's why he's talking about being fifty. I, I am on the wrong side of fifty. I'm gonna blink and be sixty, and I'm really scared. You know what's great about being 60? It beats the alternative, which is being dead. So. Well, no, yeah. Well, they listen, you know, for a guy who has died twice already, you're right. I'm you very good to here. Die twice. Can you answer the age old question? See the light? No. Uh, are the Mets going to win the World Series this No, of course. See the light. <laughs> is there anything. After this, this wonderful little turn we take on this rock. Well, you know, I don't, apparently I was, thankfully I wasn't gone that long, but the one time I came to, I was having, you know, the last rites. And then the priest kind of quickly, he didn't double down on it. Thankfully what he did was, <laughs> he said, cause I, I thought, I didn't know what was going on. And, and he said, you know, just something along the lines of you're fine. My son, he was a much older man. He's really a very sweet man. But um, I, w I was coming out of a blackout, and I was in a intensive care unit, and he was doing the yay, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, which was mind-blowing. But I don't think I was gone enough to have had any of those white light things. And then one time I was being wheeled to again, the ICU, ICU unit and both gone for like a minute and then they paddled me. Did you have a Monty Python moment? Like, I'm not quite dead yet. 
<laughs> Ring out you did. Ring out you did. I like, you know, I love you, Scott. Deeply and passionately. You're one of my closest friends, and I'm only making light of this because we can. And, you know. Absolutely. Like, no, listen. I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. I, I am very happy to be anywhere. So, you know, all the pain and all the agita that might be coming. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to stop eating her meatballs any more than I'm going to stop going on the, the shows and whatnot as much as I hate the driving and the traveling and all the physical pain, but it is what it is. You know, I, my body's been through so much that it, it's just a miracle. I am doing kind of as well as I am doing, I, I you know, I, Pain and all. So now that I brought this film to uh, this show to a screeching halt of, of, of the fun has ceased. You know, you know what's so funny? Uh, you have all these problems, and when we make movies together, I usually have you climbing cliffs and, and dangling off waterfalls. Maybe I should rethink those kind of things when when we shoot. Yeah. Well, I feel you're talking. Uh, I I think in Middle Village. Well, I didn't do, I didn't do anything all that physical in Middle Village, but that was. Yeah, we were fun. running around the woods yeah. looking for monsters in the in Child State Park, which is sadly now no longer existing, which is kind of horrifying. What happened? That park is closed? It's closed because we had the storm that I shot uh, the second part of Wits End in demolished the park, and they never were able to reopen it because all the trails were washed away. And, 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 uh, and, and Wow. You know, in my infinite wisdom... I thought, hey, you know, this is the storm of the century. There's like four feet of snow. Hey, how about I bring myself and my camera out in the middle of this blizzard and see if I can make a movie about surviving in a blizzard? And that was pretty, wow. pretty fucking stupid to be honest. In a pinto. Well, I, I, think, I, I think in your last, in the last time you invited me to, when you very graciously invited me into the cast of your last film. Oh, Full Moon Fever, that was a nice, easy shoot. We went to a right. park. Right. The only I, thing that was yeah. horrible about shooting there is the flight pattern was right over the fucking park. Oh, oh I didn't realize no. that we were shooting. So that's made in a nightmarish post, my friend. But otherwise, it was we captured like really on both some of your best performances ever. It was, uh, in my opinion, you, know, you were really, really on that day. Oh, well, thank you. And, and nothing physically demanding, thankfully. Yeah, but I, I got the segue. Speaking of wonderful actors, we've got a real actor coming on. Yes, not 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 clown shoes like you and I, Scott. Right, not a um, not a guy who's just a guitar player turned actor. <laughs> well, don't forget director as well. You're a regular Kenny Loggins. You're like a guitar player turned actor. I don't know. I've never seen Kenny Loggins in anything. With that being said, you know what? We've talked way too long. We've kept our wonderful guest in the green room way too long. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our guest tonight is a wonderful actor, writer, and director, and uh, is literally just like in every horror movie that's being made these days, and uh, is just a great guy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gregory Blair. No, no. Ladies and gentlemen, don't call him Greg Gregory Blair. Did I? I called, I, I called him Gregory Blair. I you you did, but I, I was. It's better than calling him George like I did at the pre-show. By the way, Greg, I just realized this, and it's horrifying. He just called you Greg. You have, you called him George Bonehead, not Greg. That's what I did. Uh, 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 did I not just say I called him George? Oh, I thought you said Greg. I'm no. A bonehead. I, t I, I take back the bonehead and put it yes. in me. <laughs> it absolutely is horrifying how much of a doppelgagger you are, Greg. To do you know Tony Timpone? I do know. We're Facebook. We're, we're connected through Facebook, I think. But yes, I know who you're talking about. You, and, you guys are well, like. Do you guys not see the resemblance, or do you not know? Oh Timpone no, I do. Well yeah. Enough? I'm not sure I know the other gentleman. Yeah, Tony Timpone. Well, he's is... infinitely more handsome than I am. So well, thank you. He's been oh. on here. He grew in up in middle. He grew up five blocks away from me in Middle Village. If, you know, it's just one of oh. those curses that we bear. You know, us Middle Village guys. <gasps> Who didn't you live near? Uh, <laughs> well, Darren wasn't famous, so. But yeah, 
Actually, right. Ray Abruzzo. That's okay. Ray, I haven't died yet. Ray, <laughs> come on, man. Get with the program. I know. I feel like I'm, you know, <laughs> Scott here's died twice. And then I, you're like, and now, oh, here's this guy who hasn't even died once. You haven't even died once. George, George, somebody, I don't know, some cheap, you know, whatever. <laughs> I've literally died on this show like 900 times. So, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was more, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> But, uh, so, you, Greg? Wait a minute. So we got to do the Gregory. Gregory, sorry. <laughs> so that that was so Gregory. Explain to us the Greg Gregory thing. Oh, uh, so that's it, it's very simple, really. Uh, originally, it came from it was my pen name, and I foolishly didn't change it legally, and then I got my first check made out to Gregory and I couldn't cash it. I, I, yeah, I ended up being able to do it because I sweet, I talked to the person at the bank and we blah, 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 because I mean, Gregory is my middle name. So long story short, I legally changed it. The thing that is uh, so I think valuable is a very logistic thing is on a set, especially depending on the size of the set, there's going to be three, four, 10, 12 Greg's. So being the only Gregory, which usually is the case, means if somebody calls out my name, I know they need me. Because if somebody, if I'm in makeup and somebody's working very carefully on, you know, whatever scary thing I'm or whatever, I don't want to have to turn my head or respond if I don't have to. So I'm almost kind of deaf now yeah. to Greg. Because in there, it doesn't matter if there's walkie talkies or, you know, whatever, invariably somebody's going to yell, Greg, and at least I don't have to turn around. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's, that's really all it is, is it just gives me that much of a little bit of a difference that helps people identify me and me get identified so there you go. That's the reason. I'm I'm sure you were waiting for some really exciting, fabulous story. Uh, you know, I died twice. No, you know. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a union thing. There already was the Greg Blair, right? There's a Greg Blair. Yes, yes. The the he was set designer. I want to say for ah, is it Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Something like that. Anyway, there's lots of now. There's a lot of us. Um, but yeah, I know I had a friend when uh, I was younger that had to change change his name because there were too many already. Um, even just on IMDb, it's like okay, there's too many. So yeah, there's nothing. I mean, that's a job. I feel bad for cats who and ladies who have to do the you know Jim Jones three. You know, like there's numbers right the name right. because there's so many others. You know what's yeah. frustrating? To me, there's only one Tom Holland, and he directed Fright Night and Child's Play. And but he looks great in a Spider-Man But he looks great in a Spider-Man costume, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, now, there's an example. They they spell the same. Alive. <laughs> That's spelled the same way, and one of them's a one, and one of them's a two. And No, they actually, it's very strange. On IMDb, they both are just Tom Holland, I guess. Well, you know what? I, mean, I think probably Tom Holland, the writer-director, is probably primarily writer director and tom holland yeah. not here is primarily actor right yeah like tom holland may not be in sag as tom holland the director gotcha or, yeah, the, or yeah, they yeah, said maybe. we can buy imdb you better separate us that's <laughs> so Greg, I, I, I missed that we could do what show both of them combined can buy imdb so make us separate oh i saying. got you well yeah well so Gregory, well, now that that was on a delay, and I feel stupid. All right, thank you. <laughs> You'll edit that out. Oh, I'm going to get my first stupid question out of the way, and then hopefully the show will absolutely go uphill from here. But this is – forgive me if you think this is a stupid question, but – Oh, bring it. I saw you worked with Brent Spiner on a film. What was it called? Death Hell or something? Uh, it, he did a web series called mm. Fresh Hell. Fresh Hell, Okay. Yes, and I was in one of the episodes. It was about 
<laughs> it was a very subversive show. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's still online, and he's hilarious. Um, and in in the episode, he was trying. It's basically him trying to teach acting. Okay. But it ends up being a bunch of people who want to be in porn. So he's like trying to be very esoteric about tea. And we're like, where do you put the, the, the clothespin and <laughs> stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. He was super, super nice. And yeah, I had a great time. No, the reason I ask is because well, uh, I've never was blessed to work with uh, Brent Spiner. But my table was next to him at Big Apple Comic Con, and we sat next to each other for an entire weekend. We, and when and when cons get slow, usually there's schlep sitting next to you, and you sit there and you know battle <laughs> like idiots. And the greatest thing about him was that, and this happens more frequently than not, is that he was nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, what I anticipated him to be like. Uh, when you watch, when you grow up watching him on uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation as Data, you sure. think, he, yeah, you would think he was like, he, uh, like a certain kind of kind of a stupid. And I don't mean this in a bad way at all, but he's kind of got like a, a like a surfer dude kind of thing going on, which just shocked the shit out of me. Well, yeah, he has. First of all, he's extremely witty and sarcastic. Yeah. So he's got that whole thing going, um, and then. Surfer, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that, but it's it's very much you. I think when you don't know anything about a person other than who they play, right? Seeing them be something different is discombobulating. But you know, he was on Broadway, mm -hmm. and you know, so I guess I think I knew that he was multi-talented and had many hats and and you know all of it we're actors so we have our own personalities that usually or often are very different from the characters we play mm -hmm. especially if you get uh, if you're lucky as brent was to be able to be cast in something where it goes on for you know a decade or whatever <laughs> Yeah. Because then people do just identify you and sort of think, oh, that's your personality. I mean, I think second to only Spock, Data is probably one of the most beloved characters in, in Star Trek. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, no, and uh, trust me, I think he's an awesome dude. I had a great weekend with him. It's just he was just totally different than what I thought. Uh, probably didn't was. expect him to be as laid back. Yeah, no, it was that. And he was like, uh, I don't know, earthy, you know, I didn't get earthy yeah. from him. Very. Brett's humor is awesome. Okay, sure. Yeah. Someone met Brett. Uh, so, Greg, tell me, tell me a little bit about you as a young man. What made <laughs> you want to become uh, uh, an actor or a director, or what you know uh, made you go in this direction in life? Well, I think. I'm sorry for the noise. It's my dog. I don't know what she's doing. She's tap dancing. Um, <laughs> I think I kind of came out of the womb knowing. I wanted to be an actor mm -hmm. and then my next, the next thing that came into my head was writing partly because I think I was always writing things to act. You know, eventually I got one of those little cameras and I wanted to make movies. So I had to write the scripts and, you know, get all the gang together and make the movies. And, and so it was all, I think that's probably was my first directing quote unquote. <laughs> um, so yeah, it all just sort of happened. It was always there from day one. Um, mm. And then I finally started pursuing acting and writing almost simultaneously uh, before directing, professionally that is. Um, and then, then directing and producing sort of happened after the fact. But you know yeah, as a young man, I was that kid running around with a camera going, I need better actors. No. You know what's so funny? What you just said, um, something occurred to me. Like when I was growing up, I grew up watching all the older films, like Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire films, and Judy Garland, okay, yeah, and Mickey yeah. Rooney films, all those great MGM musicals, and and literally the films that kind of built Hollywood. And those films, if you go back and look at them, 
it was always like Fred Astaire and Bing Crosby were getting their friends together to put on a show. Or right. Mickey Rooney and, and Judy Garland were getting right. their pals together to put a big show on at the barn. Or, you know, it was all of them all kind of had the same similar vibe. And if you think about it, in 2023, it's kind of what the vibe is for independent filmmakers. It's kind of like, uh, let's get let's get everybody together and put on the big show. Let's have the party. And, you know, it, it, when you really look about it in retrospect, it's kind of come full circle if you really think about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, those movies were, I'm pretty sure, if I'm, I mean, I don't, well, I'm not an expert in, older musicals but mm -hmm. a lot it was always about as you said putting a show on the barn it was always a live show right. that i i can think of mm -hmm. um and now uh, what you're referring to which i totally agree with is it's the same thing only it's very much now in the film world in the independent film world it's um very much a case of make your own opportunities mm -hmm. so it is sort of like okay who do I know who can act? Who do I know who can write? Who do I know who has a location? Who do I, yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's everybody get together and make a movie. Now, you know what's so great about it, Gregory? And a lot of independent filmmakers do not know this. Uh, uh, making a film is like a party that everybody wants to be invited to. And you could reach out to some established actors who you know, done some really amazing and wonderful things. And you can, and, and, and the great thing about the indie film community today is that you could pitch them your work. And, uh, and uh, you know, you'd be shocked how many are willing to come aboard and help, you know, make these wonderful independent films get made and get them done. Yeah, uh, I see so, it happen all the time. Wait, I got, I, I got to say something about this then. So th this is kind of like, leeway too so who did you get for your movie <laughs> this is a great story so because it has a lot of different lessons so the uh, i wrote the mystery of emma thorne uh last year at towards the end of the year and it was just an idea that came to me. Actually, I had the idea for the ending and I didn't know anything else. And then I started writing the script. And originally it was going to be this horror film, some sort of dark macabre thing. But the minute I started getting into writing the characters and the reality of where it was going to end up, it became much more about um, the sort of emotional terrain of these people. Because it's about a woman who disappears and the husband and uh, adult son who try to deal with that. They enlist a detective and try to deal with the fact that their mother and wife has disappeared. Um, and it's, there's no note. Anyway, so, you know, the, anybody in that situation, if you've lost a child or anyone like that, the, the I guess, horror of that very traumatic and whatnot. So there, there's there's this whole sort of emotional element to it that I didn't expect. Anyway, long story short, I finished it. And I almost never have an actor in mind when I write. But this time, when I, when I somewhere towards the end, when I finished it, or one scene in particular, I don't know, I thought of um, this actress. Flashback 10 years ago, at a film festival, Lynn Lowry and I meet. And because we're both there on my film, Deadly Revisions is in the festival. And I can't remember what film she was in. Doesn't matter. We met, we hit it off. We stayed in contact and she kept hitting me up every now and then on Facebook. Hey, any good roles for me? And I'd be like, I wish, <laughs> but no. Um, and so flash forward 10 years later now, she goes, anything for me? And I went, well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I mentioned this and I said, it's not like your typical, because she does a lot of horror, because um, she's famous for that. And I said, it's not horror. In fact, I don't think there's even a drop of blood. 
would you be interested? And she was like, yes, I love drama. I used to do theater, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, I'll send you the script. You let me know what you think. She read it in like a day, came back to me, said, I love it. I want to play her. So that's kind of a lesson in longevity, in sticking to it, in keeping your relationships going, in waiting, and, uh, and in believing that, you know, stuff will happen. So, yeah, that's, that's the story of how the incredible Lynn Lowry got involved in The Mystery of Emma Thorne. She's going to play the title character, Emma. Wow. Congratulations. And I will tell you, it's very, very easy to see why you are, you know, so beloved within the genre and within indie filmmaking, because you have a passion. Like, it's so clear how happy this stuff makes you. And that's so uh, awesome. And you know what? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Camden Toy saying hello. Great actor. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and a ton of movies. Camden, I hope you're well. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Camden. Uh, uh, you know, that's really... Sadly, I'm old and, and, could, and, and mean and rotten now, and I just don't want to do anything anymore. Which, <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of... I'm so jealous of, like, the light and the fire and the passion you have, and that's why your stuff is so good. So congratulations. That's awesome. Ah, thank you. This was paid for by... <laughs> No, I mean, if you saw like me, Scott, and Brian from Clerks, we, we hang out quite frequently. We literally sit around on like rocking chairs and, and yell at kids to get off our lawns and shit like that kind of stuff now. Oh, I do that too. Uh, that's my Monday. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's our Monday through Sunday now. That's the horrifying part. So, Gregory, uh, I know you write, you direct, uh, and you act. Tell me a little bit about uh, uh, a director that you admire and why you admire, uh, you know, any individual director? Ah, there's so many. Um, I, um, I like the risk taking directors mm -hmm. generally. Um, and by that, I mean, risky subject matter, often or telling a tale in an unusual way um like uh, well jane campion comes to mind um uh ken russell okay comes to mind um, what about david lynch are you a david lynch fan he you know he totally fits the wheelhouse we're talking about but mm -hmm. i'm not a big fan um and i'll have a lot of people like go <gasps> <laughs> because he's totally that's he's totally the right wheelhouse um i was just going to mention one more oh peter greenaway oh sweet and the thing is i don't necessarily have to love every single film mm -hmm. a director i admire makes in fact all three everyone i've mentioned has made films i don't like <laughs> it's not about whether you like something or not it's really about whether or not you appreciate the artistry that went into it. I think that's something that's very difficult for a lot of people to do is to separate that. It's always, I liked it. It's good. I didn't like it. It sucks. And I don't think that those two things, those things don't go together. You can love something and it can be pretty crappy. No, we absolutely. call those guilty pleasures, right? Yeah. You know, that movie is not that well made, but you love it anyway. Do you know what I mean? It brings you pleasure. So in that sense, it's a great film because it brings you pleasure. What better thing for a film to be able to do? You know, Xanadu for me. That, Oblivion I, for me. I love I to think, watch that, you know? I don't think anybody ever seen Oblivion, but I love that movie. It's about cowboy aliens. It was directed by Sam Raimi under a, under a, a fake I name. I kind of remember that and with had bad George, CG. It had, yeah, it's a terrible. And, and, and Bruce Campbell plays like a lizard guy, but they he's under... He's under a different name too, but it has George Takai and uh, the woman who played Catwoman. I, I, I totally I, have to see that. Oblivion is a great movie. Because <laughs> Sam Raimi is another one that I love. Right. A great what, example. What, what was that? When, when was that? When was Oblivion? Yeah. It was between Evil Dead 1 and 2. Yeah, it was on it was Netflix really? for a while. It was on a very, huh. very long time ago. It's a, It's wow. about... 
It was about aliens and cowboys, and uh, I think he directed under like Sam Irvin or something weird. I don't remember. Uh, but I have it was to, get, a, I have a, to a, check a, that a, out. Oblivion. It was before the even crappier movie Cowboys vs. Aliens. Oh yeah, which, which <laughs> that I saw. John Favreau, Queens <laughs> College, brilliant genius. So I got to ask what an opinion did. really fast because my wife and her family love the movie The Cotton Club. I've watched it twice with her, and I'm, I'm still telling her that movie could have been summed up in about 25 minutes instead of <laughs> however the hell long it was. But I, anybody else, I, I thought it was kind of like a disaster. Is that the Gregory Hines picture? Yeah, you're talking about the old movie about... No, no. Uh, the Cotton Club with... Um... Oh, what the hell's his name? It's going to drive me nuts now. Richard Gere? Yes, there you go. Yeah, that's well. I mean, that is at least 30, 30 years old, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Longer, but wait a minute. Let's put some perspective on this. It's old, more, old not, by old, I meant like you're not talking. There wasn't a remake I didn't hear about. Right. No, no. I mean, that is definitely an eighties. Yeah, Gregory Hines, like dancing right, on the right, guy's right, grave right, at the right. end. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good movie. I'm, my thing is, and here's another one. People will go. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, movies are too long nowadays in general. I think this whole everything has to be over two hours thing is garbage. Yeah, an hour and a half it's, is like the, it's yeah. the sweet spot. Or bring back well, intermissions. Here, yeah, here, here's where I go. If the narrative supports it, mm -hmm. your movie can be as long as you want. Look at those two Avengers movies that were like three hours. They supported that runtime. You know, some I of the old the musicals... The end you know? game was pretty, pretty rough. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, Infinity it's all, it's all a matter of opinion, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think that so many films are just too long nowadays. So, especially genre pictures. I'm, I'm, I'm of the school, a genre picture, keep it tight, you know? I don't, nobody, people get tired of laughing. Don't have a comedy go on for two and a half hours. People get tired of like being scared. How many jump scares are you going to throw at me? Don't have your horror movie go on for two and a half hours. Don't have your side. I'm just, that's, that's me in general. You, you, you have an exception where the narrative supports two and a half hours. Awesome. Most of the time though, I'm like, Where's the editor? <laughs> that should have been 90 minutes. W saying lots of backstage. Raiders is one hour, 55 minutes. Economy of filmmaking on full display. Yeah. Some films, you know, well, and Raiders is, I mean, yeah, it's a genre film, but it's also an adventure film, which means it needs, the, it has this trajectory. I think those things can be longer, kind of like the Lord of the Rings movies. I mean, they're, it's this... You know, Lawrence of Arabia, that probably wouldn't have worked 90 minutes. <laughs> you know, adventure <laughs> movies get, they they fall into that the long category. I would say um, certain dramas can fall into that category. Old school musicals regularly fell into that category, often had intermissions. You know, so again, if your narrative supports it, your movie can be as long as you want. I just don't think... Usually they do. Yes, it was. Uh, I'm having a brain fart, but uh, the guy who directed Shortcuts turned in that movie at nine and a half hours. Altman. Uh, Altman, yeah. And Altman's a great director. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, nine, and, spend and, a nine and a half hours watching a movie, though, dude. I, it's, 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 well, and uh, Shortcuts, if I remember, was just an anthology. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, it had every, just every... like to me, oh my God, anthologies are the worst. <laughs> but if you're going to do one, keep it short. But it was cool. I think Huey, Huey Lewis that. got to piss on a corpse. That was kind of cool. I'm the, um, I'm an Altman. I'm a big Altman fan. And Shortcuts is pretty long. The version that's been released is pretty, pretty long. Yeah, I think it's like is it? I don't hours. even remember. I mean, I saw it in the theaters. Yeah. But like, I, if you ask me my favorite Altman films, that's not going to come up. I'm going to think of, you know, The Wedding, Three Women. I mean, I think there are so many other great Altman films. You know, it's, oh, not, it's, not, Matt, as great as, not it's not as great as film, but I think it has one of his greatest scenes when Andy McDowell goes to Lyle Lovett 
because he keeps bitching about her not picking up her kid's birthday cake, but her kid died because he got hit by a car. And she goes to him because he's like a monster about it. And the, you see him switch to humanity. You know that scene I'm talking about, guys? Oh, I've seen the movie several times. I know what you're talking about. That, is that yeah, a shortcut? That's a, yeah, shortcuts, yeah. Oh, okay. That's an actor's field day, I think. I mean, I, I, there's not a single... I mean, every everybody in that film is sublime. That's just my opinion. I That's like... Well, that's yeah. what I remember about the film. I don't remember really caring much about the stories, but I remember every single actor in every yeah. single piece was yeah. pretty amazing. Everybody's knocking it out of the park, and it's just yeah. you know, packed with it. The player, player was another. Oh, one. there you go. Much better film for me. Ah, John John Wayne liked uh, Nashville and the player. He, uh, John Wayne also had a question for you, Gregory. He wanted to know what is your favorite movie of all time. <laughs> well, well, uh, I'm like Sophie's choice. Is, <laughs> is that a loaded <laughs> question? <laughs> My favorite movie of all time. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. Wow. Um, <laughs> put a gun to my head, I would probably chicken out and and say The Wizard of Oz. Oh, sweet. That's a wonderful, wonderful choice. Because that's a pretty perfect movie. You Scott, know? do you have a favorite movie of all time? Oh, God. I, couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I, I mean... I give, it's funny. Uh, Go ahead. No, no, I mean, but it did have to be varying criteria, whether it's decade, genre... I could never pick one of a movie or of a, of a, of a band or a song. It's, it just seems impossible to ask for somebody who loves it so deeply. It's yeah. funny. I mean, I love film more, almost as much as life itself. And I have a definitive favorite movie of all time. I think every movie really? should genuflect to this film because I think every frame of this film is a masterpiece. I think It's a Wonderful Life is the greatest movie ever made. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. I mean, the 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 scene of redemption when he, George Bailey is in the bar, talking to God, begging, you know, for you know to get guidance, is some. And if you watch the uh, Jimmy Stewart, literally puts on the actor's class of all time in that film, ranging from every emotion to every t p type of performance you need in the film. It literally is a cinematic masterpiece. But that's a good. That's a good one. I'll give you that. There's also, a lot of passing of time too, right? Like, I mean, it, doesn't the character go from like, high, not I don't want to say high school, but he goes from a very young man to he goes from a, a child, a child, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. So I think like forty-two is ultimately what he is at the end of that movie, but uh, it, it's. Uh, just I think is just I'm such a fan I went up to where they shot uh, It's a Wonderful Life it's up in the Finger Lakes in New York and st stood on the George really? Bridge yeah it's it's one of those things if you're a, if you're a, it's a Wonderful Life fan that you have to check out I was uh, in the Finger Lakes shooting a film once oh yeah oh no, no yeah. it's right right there is where they uh, everything for it, it's like the town at It's a Wonderful Life uh, was shot in and inspired huh. everything is pretty cool it's a gorgeous area I'm completing a quick Oh, yes, John Wayne said uh, uh, The Wizard of Oz is a great choice. The idea of funding friends and competing a quest. It's a wonderful life. Yes. And you know what? I'm very happy that Gregory and I didn't say something like, you know, Infinity War or something. It, it shows that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen this movie, but uh, if you want a really great contemporary, great, great, indie contemporary film run to see uh spontaneous i couldn't remember the name for a minute Great i don't think movie. i've heard anything about it you know what don't do any research just <clears throat> go in to the movie not knowing anything about it it's on uh amazon and it has a uh, christopher Plummer's grandson and katherine langford wait is and that the one with uh spontaneous as in spontaneous combustion yes yes Okay. Did you see that movie? I'm I'm trying to think if I did. Just a oh, he's you, covering it. Isn't that sad? He's in it. He's in it. Okay, so maybe that movie sucks in Gregory's opinion. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to remember. Did I see them? I have the worst memory lately when it comes to movies. Movies that I've seen recently. Mm -hmm. 
if, if I enjoyed it a long time ago, well, okay, except for last night's movie. But if I enjoyed it a long time ago, I'll remember it. If I enjoyed I it four um, weeks ago. I would imagine you guys could probably agree with this, but anything that I really enjoy, I've seen many, many, many times. You know, I mean, a film, so they stick. And then the things that were really good that I've only seen once or twice, they don't stick. And uh, that's a shame, but it's funny. I had this a discussion with somebody about this recently, and they were daft on why would you see a movie more than once? That's like, well, why would you play a record more than once? That's insane, right? Well, you wouldn't reread a great book? You know, like they thought it was insane to watch movies over more than once. Because I had told somebody I probably saw Angel Heart like probably a, at least 30 times in my life. Angel Heart. I watched the first 15 minutes of that movie. Well, uh, I mean, in Scott's defense, <laughs> it, it was on 30 times in a row HBO every night. So. He's the part is that he, he's not, he's not, it's the part when Lisa Bonet gets naked is that he watched 100 times. Do I have the right number? Is that a Lisa Bonet? Yes. Movie? Yeah, that's I, it's, uh, I mean, it's. Mickey Rourke is untouchable in that movie. And, that's I, I, when she was no longer a Cosby kid. I'm glad that you told me because I, I, I only saw that film probably when it came out, you know, on video at the video store. And maybe I was way too, was it in the early 90s or late 80s? I think it was very yeah, early 90s probably. 90s? Yeah. About. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe I was just not old enough to dig it yet, so I'm going to give that another try. But you should. Sure that? That's a great ending. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's that, that's me. You know, that's like, you know, uh, it's 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 primarily because of my love affair with my man crush on '80s '90s Mickey Rourke, because he was untouchable in my mind in those years. You know what? It reminds me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I, no, I, it's, I, it's, I it's, apologize. No, it's okay. It's uh. It's not going to be for everybody. I mean, it's voodoo. It's weird. It's a, it's, it's a period it's piece. Story, and you right, it's early, early 30s or 40s is the timeline. It's not current, but it's just, I mean, it does for the film noir sort of thing. It's like the, the perfect film noir movie. And again, all the performances, not just Mickey Rourke, but Alan Parker is... Um, a pretty underrated filmmaker, I think. No, absolutely. It sounds like, and there's another. There's a couple films around that time that get no love. That I absolutely. Leaving Las Vegas is a good movie. Yeah. Uh, what I was thinking of. Uh, did either one of you guys see Red Rock West or After Hours? Both are uh, amazing. Right. After Hours. And after Hours with Griffin Dunn when he gets stuck in New York City overnight. That's a Scorsese film, I think. It is a Scorsese film, and it's. I saw that. Well, I'm so old. I saw that in the theater. And there was also another one called Smooth Talker. Do we? Do one of you guys remember that movie? I saw that. I think I remember it, but I didn't see it. I think Bill Ragsdale from Fright Night was in Smooth Talker. When I was, those were like my go-to, like angsty, early twenty-something. <laughs> After Hours, and what was the other? Uh, Red Rock West. That's Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Yep. Right. right. And Smooth yep. Talker. Uh, if you like Red Rock, Red Rock West, there's a an earlier Sean Penn movie. I don't think it might be. Is it called U Turn? Yes, there's a I think a Sean Penn film called U Turn. Right. Um, it's got a similar vibe. It's almost like this. You know, the the lead cat gets lost in a weird town, and there's all kinds of wackiness. He's got to sort of mitigate to get out of said wacky town, and very noir, very. You know, everybody's kind of two time and everybody. So I'm sorry I took this off the rails. Yeah, sorry, Gregory. We're, we're terrible hosts. We don't help them. <laughs> we don't help the guests promote their career. No, These are entertainment people. As long as the people are entertained. Gregory, I wanted to ask you because he, uh, he's a dear friend of mine and has been on this show, uh, I think twice already. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it was like working with Jay Horton. Oh. Well, Jay Horton and I have known each other for quite a while, obviously, and um, we, I don't know how we first hooked up. Oh, I think I did a radio show. I think I did a podcast of his, um, <laughs> funny, funnily enough. And anyway, uh, for this most recent show, for Craving, um, 
he had the script that he had written originally about 10 years ago. Everything is 10 years ago. How weird is that? <laughs> and I think he had rewritten it several times. Um, and he, at, at, in, the, in, the, in current days, decided this was the film that was his film he really wanted to make. And damn it, it was now or never. And he looked at the script and was like, I need help. So he had contacted me because I do a lot of rewriting and script consulting and all that sort of stuff. And he said, talk to me about what he wanted to help with. And I went through it and I could totally see what he was talking about and all the things that he thought were problematic and the things he wanted changed. And so I just said, I looked at it and I said, look, I think the best way for me to do this is to just write a whole new version based on all of your material. I mean, same story story, same characters, more or less, but let's pull together all the pieces and, and try to make the story sort of flow better and whatnot. And he said, okay. So I wrote a draft and then gave it to him. And then he did a final version because of he was doing crowdfunding because he was already in motion because he was absolutely making this film. So he was doing like crowdfunding and he knew he was going to need some extra roles for perks and all kinds of things. And so he did the final draft. And at some point he I think we said, so he was like, you want to be in it? And I'm like, yeah, maybe if we can figure out a role. And one of the roles we were playing with, because he had a couple of ideas and one of them, there were two characters that we combined into one because uh, they were sort of like ping and pong, you know what I mean? And we just turned them into one one dude. And I said, well, here, here's my thought. Um, it, I'm going to, what if I play Travis is what we, and we ended up calling the character. I said, because you have a lot of young people in this bar and it feels... I don't want to say it's ageist, but I think maybe having an older dude in there in the mix might help. This was before we had, we had a couple of other actors come in. Um, and, and in fact, Felissa Rose ended up playing uh, one of the other roles uh, that was an older dude. We changed it to a woman, which I loved. I loved <laughs> that awesome. casting. A, I love her. It and wouldn't B. be the first time she played a dude. Right. <laughs> Funny. But anyway, I love that he, he made it a woman because she owns the bar and I like that whole sense of empowerment and blah, 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 blah. Anyway. And, uh, and so I played this other guy and I said, this will be good because I'm a little older than most of these other guys. And it'll play, I think it'll play nicer because then I can sort of be a little bit of a father ish figure in a sense that I'm like trying to, make ideas about how we can survive and whatnot and anyway that so that's that's how that happened and on set he's terrific he knows exactly what he wants everything's organized and planned and and you walk in there and he just kind of lets you do your thing he assumes that you are as you should be a professional actor and you already have your character built and ready to go. And you know everything you're going to do. And it's just a matter of him telling you where you need to stand so that you end up on camera. And if there's some little tweaks because he had to change a line of dialogue here and there because of something they've already shot, he'll give it to you. But I mean, it's super easy. Um, and that's how it should be on set. Because let's face it, everything else about making a movie is so hard <laughs> you know all the moving parts the what were you talking about the planes going by the, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. there's so many external things happening around you making it difficult you want your cast and your crew to be the two things that are not making it difficult they're the things making it easy and jason makes that happen yeah, he's got such a wonderful temperament. I mean, it's literally like yes, uh, yeah, it's like uh, your 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 wonderful older brother teaching you stuff along the way, kind of mentality. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's a it is it's a great temper. There was somebody else that I was thinking of just the other day that has a very similar kind of temperament. That's always so calm and cool, uh, 
And it's great when you find people like that, because usually actors are not that. <laughs> We're like, not that. So, um, you know. One, one of your films, I'm sorry, I'm just, we're, we're running out of time and there's just so many things I want to talk to you about. So, uh, Go, I'll, ta I'll, I'll give you short answers. No, you don't have to give me short answers. A film that you made that I absolutely love and I love to hear about how you put it all together was Garden Party Massacre. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I came up with the title first and thought it was hilarious and thought, I have to write this movie. <laughs> it, it just came out of nowhere. And so I just started writing it and... <laughs> And then I was about two thirds of the way done and I had a couple of different ideas of how to end it. So I had a reading with a bunch of friends and we all read it. And then we all just sort of did this open table of what should happen next. And everybody, you know, came up with ideas and I was like writing them all down. Like, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Anyway, out of all of that, I ended up uh, a casting some of the people and B finishing the story. And, um, and then I had to cast a few more people, obviously. And then it was just like, yeah, it was just like, it came together really quickly. Um, and it was a super fun shoot. Um, it's, it's a fun yeah. movie. You check it out. It really is. So, Gregory, what do you have in store for all of us uh, in the coming months and years? What do you got cooking? Okay, let's see. Well, okay, so there's my film that I'm making, The Mr. Vem Thorn, mm -hmm. and that will, we're going to do a crowdfunder for that starting next month, July. And that's a mystery drama that stars Lynn Lowry and a couple other people I'm excited to announce, but I haven't yet. So you'll just have to wait and see. I'll probably <laughs> announce them as part of the crowdfunding thing. Oh, I think sweet. I might do that. Um, you know, if we get five more people, something, I don't know. Um, uh, I'll be playing a mad scientist sort of character in uh, Adam Steigert's next film. I've done uh, two of his films. He did Fang uh, that I was in and uh, The Horrific Evil Monsters. And this one is uh, called uh, Ambus Alien Invasion. It's actually a sequel to uh, another film he already made. All his films are in the same universe. Um, and then a short film I did called Favorite Son hopefully will be coming out. I think it's doing the festival circuit now. That's sort of a thriller um, where I play a not so nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Shock, right? <laughs> well, that's one of the nice things about some of the projects I've been in lately is I haven't been the bad guy. Because <laughs> uh, I'm the bad guy in Family Man. That's also supposedly going to come out soon. I'm a horrible human being in that. I kill people and I'm an alcoholic and I beat my wife and kid. And, you know, it's like, ah, what don't I do in that movie? Oh, I just call that a Tuesday around here. <laughs> and uh, ooh, I'm trying to think of all the other things that are coming out and that I'm doing. I'm, that's enough. That, that's enough. You know, I would say... The, the the very next thing that's going to probably pop up is going to be the crowdfunder for the Mr. of Emma Thorne. Sweet. So Gregory, where can so, people find you? I'm oh, sorry, Scott, go ahead. No, I was just going to make a comment about Lynn. She, Lynn Lowry, she really is a sweetheart. And you putting her in something where she can really stretch out and do drama, I think is a fantastic thing because I think she's Probably, you know, and I don't want to say in an ageist way because I don't mean it that way, but when I say like her generation's finest horror actress, just remove horror from that. She's been in the game a long time and she's really good and she's a really nice person. She really is because I had the very good fortune to sit at a booth next to her a few years ago at a horror convention in Jersey. And uh, I think I think they screened Franken... Uh, Frankenhooker? She's in Frankenhooker, right? Okay, I'm pretty sure she is. I don't know. Um, I'm sure JW will flip that up. Um, yeah. She's just a real sweetheart, but I think she really needs to, more people need to see and appreciate her as an actress. Well, this is the, the thing is uh, when, I, when I thought of her, I thought, wouldn't it be nice not to see her screaming and yelling and covered in blood, but see her actually be able to be a woman who isn't crazy, you know? And uh, 
Yeah, I think she's going to be beautiful in it. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that how that all plays out. No. I'm sure. I'm sure. She's she's really dynamite. I mean, it's funny because you bring it up. Our dear friend Tiffany Shepes, who I, me, and we love to abuse the shit out of each other, but we're actually dear friends. She's on Picard season three, playing the Doctor of of this. Uh, I mean, she's now literally part of Star Trek lore, and I isn't I'm, that awesome? I'm literally like a proud older brother, or, or she'd probably say father in this case. For, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's amazing how talented a lot of people. In, in, in the indie markets and the indie horror films and the B-horror movies, there are some people that are just extraordinarily talented. Oh, Dave, I got to bring up one of our favorite freaking shows is when you had, you had Tiffany, you mm -hmm. had Kane Hodder, right. and you had Felissa all on yes. the same oh, time. Oh, wow. And That's let a me trifecta tell you. of sorts. <laughs> Well, they had a um, show on Fangoria at the time, and they were kind of—we were all marrying our shows together at that time. It was pretty epic. Cool, yeah. God, Felissa is another one. Uh, you know, just pure joy to be around. And all three, of, actually, all three of those gals were in that same con. Tiffany, it was actually Lynn. All the clerks, knuckleheads, <laughs> and. Tiffany and uh, Felissa. I mean, um, I'm wait, yeah. I don't know, forget. I'm 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 brain farting. But they were, they were wonderful. Lynn was dynamite. Too many meatballs tonight, Scott. Or not, or not enough. Is it meatball is code for pain pills? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Right or Xanax. Gregory, where can people find you on social media if they want to follow all the cool stuff you're doing? I'm kind of everywhere. I'm, uh, I'm on Facebook. I think Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, it's all just at the Gregory Blair. And then I'm on, I don't know, I'm on a lot of other stuff too. The easiest way, scratch everything I just said, <laughs> go to gregoryblair.info. That has links to everything, my IMDb, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my whatever, 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 whatever. So GregoryBlair.info. Awesome. Well, by the way, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to meet you. You are awesome. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, it was just uh, wonderful to have you on the show. Yeah, I had a great time. Don't lie. Well, you know, except for the meatballs. The whole meatball thing. <laughs> It's a good thing. And now I'm fun. hungry. I, I hope my wife's not watching. It's a good thing the show isn't in smell of vision. Smell -o -vision. Oh, right. Is smell, -o -vision, is smell -o vision a thing yet? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was only a thing for that one movie. Frank for John Waters, Waters, it always is. I, I know. Think. Frank, no, James Whale, dude, not James Whale. Who's the guy from the, who did all those 50s horror movies with Vincent Price? Ed Wood. Ed, no, not Ed Wood. <laughs> he did you, the you house on horror. I think you of James Whale, but he didn't do no, smell no, no, vision No, James Whale is. is Right, it's Frankenstein, 1931. Yeah. I'm talking about the guy who did the Vincent Price movies, where things would fall from the House on Haunted Hill is one of his movies. William Castle, thank you, Jake. Oh, Castle, yeah. He did Smell of Vision movies. Did he? Oh yeah, he did every he he did every sense in in his movies. I had no idea. I thought that was just a John Waters thing. Nope. The Tingler thing. See, thing. that's why we have JW. He literally. Wow. He is like. Well, I feel shame. I think if we cut <laughs> open JW's head, there'll just be a film canister uh, uh, in there. JW <laughs> is the seats, yeah. wiki of movies. Yeah, yeah, you know, another thing. Uh, if if JW could help me, John Goodman made a movie that Joe Dante directed about where he played kind of William Castle. It was a great movie. Was that matinee? Matinee. Thank you. That was a look. You're the man. You're the man. Electrified. I remember yeah. some things. <laughs> and he was right. He, he was still typing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory, thank you for joining us tonight. Anytime yeah. that you want to come on, you are now part of the family. Oh, thank if you. you. Uh, come on and, and throw pieces of bologna at me, like pretty much everybody does. Yeah, and, I'll remember that. And uh, you know, every holiday, like Christmas, Halloween, uh, uh, we have a holiday show that is filled with superstars. So come on and, uh, and, and we'll make fun of Scott together. It's wonderful. 
ladies oh, and gentlemen, I can't wait. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Gregory Blair. Thank you for joining us, Gregory. Thank you. Thank you. Gregory. Appreciate it. <laughs> and, and yes, great show, and welcome, Gregory. Hey, oh. fun fact: Gregory and I have both played characters named Travis in movies. Really? Yours was in the Vulgar. clown movie, right? Yep. Vulgar. The clown movie. The clown movie. Everybody loves you the clown movie. You're specific about clown movies now. <laughs> Some more than others. Right? The first yes. clown movie. <laughs> Everybody loves a clown. Some more than others. Oh, I, what I, am I, I missing don't... with that? That's the byline. That's the, that's the tagline of the poster. Oh, Everybody it? loves a clown. Some more than others. Oh, I mean, by the way, John D JW is throwing you under the bus, Scott. Oh, no. So Lynn Lowry is not in Frankenhooker, from what I see. I don't know. <laughs> I think she, well, I guess if he knows or if he looked it up, I guess they screened Frankenhooker and Tiffany Shepis was there. Lynn was there. My cat was there. <laughs> He's been making appearances all night. You know. um, Just like the fly in my freaking studio by the okay. way scott i apologize for stepping on your toes many times i'm usually on my game better than that so i apologize for kind of uh stepping on your toes while you were trying to say stuff tonight no listen i i uh I, i've been a little more engaged in the shows because <clears throat> i felt like for too long a period i might have been like wallpaper <laughs> Like I would just come and I was I did a lot of listening because I wanted to respect the guest, which I still do. I always do, right. but I didn't. I felt if I didn't really have something pertinent, I was just going to lay low. Mm -hmm. So you're probably not used to me being this chatty, and no, all the sedatives have worn off. So I am I am perfectly fine with it because it's just less stupid shit that they have to hear from me because like I don't know what the fuck <laughs> you're talking about half the time, or when I just blurt random shit out. It's, um... <laughs> I guess Lynn wasn't in Frankenhooker after all, but she was part of the horror. Uh, there was like screenings of many uh, films that weekend. John Waters was actually there. Uh, like I said, Tiffany was there. Comic book men, when the show was still on, they were there. And we were all in the same gaggle, so I thought she was in Frankenhooker. No, but... I, I know we're not going to be on, ladies and gentlemen, for three weeks, but one of our next guests is, I think... John, you're probably too young to remember this individual, but they were literally a television icon from the 60s and 70s that were like um, flabbergasted that they are going to do our show. But John Biner is going to do our show the next episode we do. You remember John Biner? I know I do, and now I'm, but I'm fogging why I know. He was uh, on all the 60s and 70s comedy shows. He was literally like Milton Berle and uh, Right Hand Man, and he was on Odd Couple. Okay, it's coming to me, yeah. No, 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 yeah. Wow. I mean, so wow. our next show, Mr. John Biner will be with us. A, a, a television film legend. If, you, if you're foggy, because he's literally been out of the picture a long time now. But if you're fi foggy. Oh, I'll fire him. Yeah, I'll do some homework. I mean, I don't. Quite, a, quite an amazing get on our little program here with that being said so joe when are we coming back do we have a like three uh f the fourth weekend from today wow um let's see that was one two three that thing i think that brings us back on fourth of july weekend which wouldn't be happening yeah yeah the second july 2nd so we'll probably be back uh the ninth i guess if i try to do math here no oh, yeah that'd be seven days later that sounds about right uh, wow. Uh, I'm not going to see your mugs for freaking a month. You're a very lucky man. Very well, this time of year, all the shows are going into reruns, aren't they? Yes. That's why we need to broadcast. A writer, it's the writer's strike. Luckily, this show is just a shit show with no writing. <laughs> okay. I mean, people love shit shows. I mean, that's what creates traffic. <laughs> I mean, if there's a, let's be honest, if you're driving on the highway and there's a horrific accident on the other side of the highway. You know, I am listening to David Lee Madison's The End of the Night. You are listening to David Lee, while you're watching them cart the Yes, out that, that's the, what I the, meant. The, I mean, uh, I'm playing the podcast, obviously. Yes, yes. 
Uh, what's that cat's name? He keeps walking around in the background. That cat, get that cat out of here! Um, that's um, that that cat has several names. That's the problem. It's <laughs> Pippi, Pippi, Pipster. Put up uh, John Wayne's Art- po- uh, little thing for me. The talkie. Yes, uh, he on Generation movie is covering the Indiana Jones franchise for June. So. JW okay. show is fantastic. I said Give that it a watch. earlier. I plugged this. If you don't pay attention, it's not my fault. I know. I'm just not you, him. Jeez. No time for love, Doctor Jones. Busy up uh, right. uploading more film knowledge into his noggin because he's like. The he's film. got a direct line to the IMDb. Literally. Oh, it was funny because uh, he was. Uh, the movie guy on my, the Scranton Wilkes Bear NBC affiliate. Me and Brian went out to do uh, his show. Uh, it was like a live at five kind of show. And when I, that's when I met him for the first time over 12, 13 years ago. And that was being broadcast on what network? NBC. NBC. Nice. Uh, JW was the movie guy of Scranton Wilkes Bear, which is the 49th largest market in the country. So that's. Pretty cool, and uh, and uh, he was just so scary, knowledgeable when we did the interview. I was like, "Wow, this guy is is the bee's knees when it comes to movie stuff." All right, Scott, thank you, and I want to thank your colon for surviving the whole hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, That's because you can only see me from the neck up. <laughs> I'm really sitting on a commode. <laughs> Either that or the Depends are coming in handy. It all Zing! Uh, you're very welcome, JW. You're awesome. I know half the time we hate each other because we don't have the same movie taste, but it's all in love, JW. It's all in love. With that being said, we'll see you guys in, uh, I guess, about a month with uh, uh, comedy legend and uh, TV legend John Biner joining us. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank Gregory Blair for joining us tonight. He was a wonderful guest, great, a great filmmaker and great actor. Uh, I want to thank Uncle Scott for being uh, my brother and dear friend. And, of course, Joe, I want to thank you. You know, uh, who knows what happens in the next four weeks. One of us might get struck by lightning. With that being said, I love you guys, and thank you for all the wonderful things that you do. Uh, we will see you guys, hopefully, in four or five weeks when we all return. And uh, you guys, anything? You have anything else you want to share? Yes. Don't blow any digits off with your fireworks, kids. Don't blow any digits off. With and you. ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in for the first time, go to David Lee Madison's The End of the Night on Facebook. Hit that like and subscribe button. And if you haven't already, That's go to idea. the India Escape Network on all our socials. Hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get struck by lightning. <laughs> No, I'm saying if one of us three do, not not the Don't blow any digits do. off. Yeah. Uh, or anything else off. Ah! <laughs> I, I screwed mine off and put it on the mantle ten years ago. I well, lost mine twenty years ago when I got married. I don't well, know what the you hell go. you're talking about. You're still looking for it. <laughs> With that being said, thank you everybody for watching us. We'll see you guys in the middle of the summer. Enjoy your summer. Be well. And remember, no man is a failure. Who has friends? Good night, everybody. So now I gotta hit some buttons again. All this responsibility. Thank you.